Jesus came to Bethany because his close friend Lazarus had died four days ago. According to the family, Lazarus is gone. In fact, when Lazarus died, they went and shook him. They tried to speak to him. I do not, does the Bible say, Sister Sabina, you would know. Does the Bible say that the brother was younger or older? No? Younger? Okay. Sister Sabina says. Okay, so go back and read the scriptures. I don't remember. Or well, maybe, let's assume Lazarus was younger. And Martha and Mary would have gone and sh shaken their brother and said, Thambi, get up. But Lazarus was motionless. According to their family, Lazarus was dead and gone. So they wanted Jesus to come. Jesus didn't come the first day, the second day, the third day. It was the fourth day. That means the whole village and the town of Bethany declared he was dead because according to the Jewish traditions and Jewish beliefs, that the spirit would hover around for the next three days. And there is even a little bit of possibility for the next three days. But it was the fourth day. A town declares Lazarus is dead. The Jewish belief system declares Lazarus is dead and gone. But Jesus is walking in. He's saying, Lazarus, he's sleeping. Why Lazarus is sleeping is because my name, I want to introduce myself to you. I want to introduce to you, Bethany. I want to introduce to you, Mary. But Mary is upset and far away. And he's telling to Martha, Martha, I want to introduce to you my name. I've, I've been a good friend. I've been a good brother to you. I've been a good family to you. I've come and eaten to you. But still you do not know this name of mine. My name is life. My name is resurrection and life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, are not dead. But when I walk in, life walks in. When I walk in, resurrection walks in. When I walk in, death has to flee. Death has no say. Death has no hold. The clutches of death has to leave. When I walk in, because my name, is life. My name is resurrection. My name is resurrection and life. They moved the stone. Jesus stood in front of that Lazarus tomb and he cried out his name. He shouted out his name. And said, Lazarus, come forth. And this morning, the same Jesus stands before your tomb and says, Vinod, come forth. Asher, come forth. Gladys, come forth. Lydia, come forth. Lakshmi, come forth. And whoever you are, and whatever your situation is, and whatever your tomb is, it doesn't matter because 2,000 years ago, my Jesus became the first fruits of resurrection. He walked out free. He walked out free. Death could not hold him. And that's the belief that I have today that he is standing in front of a tomb and he's calling out our names and he's calling out uh, your situation and he's saying, uh, come out! And not just come out, but come alive! 
because when Lazarus walked out, he was not able to run out of the grave because there were grave clothes uh, that were tying uh, Lazarus out. So when Lazarus was coming out, he managed to somehow get up and he was coming out of the grave uh, with those death clothes uh, all tied around him. And Jesus said, listen, I want you to unravel him or unwrap him out of his deadness, out of the deadness of his life, out of the dead clothes of his life. Because 2000 years ago, Jesus has conquered death, but those death clothes are still in your life. You have embraced Christ Jesus. You have embraced the gospel. You know who Jesus Christ is. You have tasted and found He is good. But still, death clothes are wrapping around you and you're not able to be free because the design of your life is that you have been called to fly the skies and that is your design because you were born to fly but you are jumping on and trying your best to wriggle out of those dead clothes but this morning the spirit of resurrection is here and the dead clothes are charred out in the name of Jesus so that you would begin to walk with the Spirit. You will be filled with the Spirit. You will walk in step with the Spirit. And you are called to fly. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And that is what you've been called to do. And whatever the deadness of your life is, Jesus comes in and he says, and giving out his hands to you and shaking your hands and telling you, I am resurrection. I am life. And every dead things of your life will be completely gone. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1 onwards that you and I were dead in our transgressions. We were chained by sins. We were under the wrath of Satan. Just like how those who are disobedient are under the clutches of death and Satan. But God in His mercy and through His grace has saved us. It's not because of my goodness. My goodness could not save me. Oh, my good life could not save me. My good works could not save me. My forefathers' good lives could not save me. My forefathers' goodness could not save me. Or anything that I did or strived in order to be religiously oriented to Christ could save me. It is none of the works that you have done. But it is by His grace and by His mercy and through the faith and belief that we have in Him that you have been saved. That now you are lifted up to be seated with Him in the heavenly realms far above every ruler and authority and power and you have been granted a set of good works that are prepared in advance for you to do and He is wanting you to implement those good works and He will walk by your side in this new life so that every aspect of your old life will be gone and every day deadness and sin that so easily entangles you will be gone. And that's the reason why Romans chapter 8 and verses 10 and 11 talks about this resurrection spirit. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. And therefore come out of sins that so easily entangles you. Come out of that pornography. Pornography corrupts your mind. It's not allowing you to live that holy life within your marriage. Come out of it. Come out of lying. Come out of gossips. Come out of slander. Come out of evil words that come out of your mind and out of your mouth. Evil schemes that are dead works must be broken 
routine mundane living for the world and running after the world must stop because the pagans run after these things but those who know their heavenly father as their father knows that their father knows everything that they need and they have a jehovah jireh who provides all their needs and they call him their father they will come out of deadness because christ is alive and christ is asking you to unwrap you out of those dead clothes the second d that you need to remember this morning is that christ is alive the resurrection and life has walked into your life is stretching forth your his hands and saying yes i am this is who i am i am life i am resurrection and life It's nice, right? You come, come over and he would give hands and say, I'm life. I'm resurrection and life. He wants you out of your distress. So worried. Why? He's alive. You don't believe? He's alive. You're not talking to some roof. You're not talking to some mute idol. You're not talking to wood. You're not talking to a stone. You're talking to your creator. He's alive. He's not dead. The religions of the world are observing and worshiping dead spirits. Now why? Christ can't be religion is because religion basically worships dead spirits dead and gone Christ is alive and that's why Christianity and Christ can't be a religion or you can speak to him and he hears because he comes to you shakes your hand and says I'm alive I'm resurrection and life. And therefore why are you worried? Why are you burdened? Why are you heavy laden? Come to me, all those who are burdened and heavy laden, for I will give you rest. Because this resurrection spirit that come upon you is the spirit that leads you. He does not just come upon you. He leads you and the word of god says in romans chapter 8 that those who are led by the spirit have been given the spirit of adoption and this spirit of adoption that comes upon you helps you to lift up your hands and cry out appa appa you are my appa you are my father you are my abba dagapne and they appa that's my right no other religion allows you because religion cannot only relationship can and this is the power of resurrection when he comes to you is shaking your hands and he's telling you i'm life i'm resurrection and life you can call my father your father you can call my father your father and therefore you can cast all your cares upon him that's where therefore you don't have to be fearful because the disciples were so much in fear and shut down and they locked every door because they were so worried about the religious people because they would kill they killed even jesus they will kill us Jesus had taken them on a on a crescendo on that wonderful 
Jerusalem triumphant entry on a donkey and, and everyone's actually thinking of the prophecies of the Old Testament uh, for the Messiah will come uh, upon a cold and he will enter into Jerusalem and they are seeing with their own eyes uh, everything is happening and everything is going great and he's going and toppling the tables and taking out uh, the whip and whipping people uh, whipping uh, everything out and cleaning the temple and, and everyone's so excited and then they didn't ever imagine that in the garden of Gethsemane that uh, someone of their own will come and kiss and betray. Peter tried with his own human strength but now he's saying put down your sword. He's not even allowing us to fight. What's wrong with him? And the shepherd is arrested. The sheep are scattered. The future is gone. On top of it, there's a heavy burden of denying Christ. I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. Everyone's run. Everyone's gone. Crucified. When they were calling out and saying, hey, if you are the Messiah, come down. Even then there was some expectation. Maybe John who was around holding on to Mary, the mother, would have expected, God, Jesus, please come down. Now is your time. Now is your time to prove who you are. All hopes gone. Future completely gone. Fear completely taking over. And then you have Mary Magdalene and the women who, who at least okay, He's dead. At least make sure that I, we can go do something with his body because we love him so much. And therefore they get up that early Sunday morning to go and so that they can put on some more scents. They can put on some more spices so that they can preserve the body. They didn't realize that resurrection and life is in that body. Resurrection and life is in that body. You cannot preserve with ordinary spices. But their love for, the, for their master, for the Raboni, their master, for their elder brother, for their family member, made them go to that tomb. But now Mary is even more disappointed because... They won't even give us his body. You took away his life. You won't even give us his body. Tell me where have you taken his body? Despair. Distress. Doubts. A defeated life. And inside that closed room where everything is locked, resurrection and life just zooms past into that room. Stretches forth his hands, shakes hands with the disciples and says, hey, you want to believe you have doubts? If you want to put, you put your fingers into my wounds, it's still fresh, guys. Just three days ago. But this body is subjected to death. So that the spirit will be subjected to eternal life. Meet life. Meet resurrection and life. Meet life. Meet resurrection and life. Because now the same disciples have been commanded. I give you a commission. And I'm going to fill you with my resurrection spirit. So that you will go. And that same spirit is available for us this morning. And that's the reason why you don't have to be discouraged. You don't have to be in despair. You don't have to go through doubts in life. Because Jesus is coming by your side and saying, Give your burdens to me. I care for you. For God has not given to us a spirit of fear. Everyone declare together, for God has not. Come on, open up your mouth and say, for God has not given to me a spirit of fear, but He has given to me what? A spirit of love, a spirit of power, a spirit of sound mind. Come out of your deadness. Come out of your despair. And distress, your doubts. Thirdly, 
come out of your denial. You never thought this would ever happen in your life. Peter couldn't imagine that he denied. And the problem is he, in all probability, would have gone to some bark of a tree and hitting his head. I, I, that's, that, that's my imagination of Peter. He told me. He told me. I should have been careful. He warned me. Oh, I wish the first time I denied him, I would have realized I should have stopped. Maybe Peter thought, I'm the only one who's, everybody's gone. At least if, I, if I'm there, I can do something. I, and I, I believe that sometimes we have good intentions for denial. Maybe Peter was, Peter, Peter was, a, was a radical guy. He, he was willing to take the sword and cut when there was an army out there. He was willing to take, take them head on. Maybe his intentions were right. Maybe if I could just survive, I can wisely manage and manipulate and say that I don't know him so that I can still continue on and be there. At least, at, least at, the, at the last moment, I can do something. Oh, I wish I would have stopped when I denied him first. Oh, I wish I would have stopped when I denied him second. Oh, I wish I would have stopped. I would have stopped, but... Every prophecy that they said would happen has happened now. I wish I would have done what is right. You denied and now you are in denial. You're so lost, so far. You're backslidden. But I want to speak to you and tell you that today, this morning, Jesus walks by your side. He stretches forth his hands and he says, I am life. I am resurrection and life. And he says, you come out of your denial because resurrection and life is about second chances. Resurrection and life is about second chances. Resurrection and life is about for those who have been completely lost and they feel like, man, I have no hope. Jesus comes and says, I give you hope. Peter, Peter, I know that you regret what you did. But I want you to know that the gifts and the calling that have been given to you are irrevocable. I want to speak to those who were called for ministry but have lost the ministry because of sin or certain aspects of your life or certain things didn't go well in your marriage. I want to declare to you the spirit of resurrection here is here this morning and Jesus is walking over to you and giving his hands and shaking his hands and saying and introducing himself to you. I'm life. I'm resurrection and life. Stop this life of denial. Come back. Because my gifts and my call over your life are irrevocable. I have purposes for you, Peter. Your denial does not dismiss your call to feed the lambs. Your denial does not dismiss you from the call to feed my sheep. But do you love me? Do you love me more than your life? Do you love me more than what you think you can do for me? Do you love me, Peter? Do you love me? Come out of your deadness. Come out of your distress. Come out of your denial. And fourthly, 
this morning. The Spirit of God wants to speak to this church and says, come out of your dullness. Come out of your dullness. And what is this dullness that the Spirit wants to eliminate from this church? Is the dullness in the understanding of scriptures. I have plainly and categorically shared and revealed to you my way, my plan, my thoughts, my will, my times. And it's found in the scriptures. But religion is dullness. It's a cover. It is the veil the scriptures talk about. How the old covenant was a veil that actually prevented people from seeing through the whole picture. But times and seasons went by. Now Jesus died and he's risen again. And he is walking along with a few disciples on the road to Emmaus. And he is actually speaking to them and opening to them about scriptures. But they are not able to understand because they are still overwhelmed by the incident of Jesus' death. And they are saying, hey, you didn't know what happened. Here is my Messiah, my, my Master, my Lord that we believe. He's been crucified. But now some women have reported saying that he's alive. But we don't know what's happening. We are just so, so distraught. We are so confused. We are going back to our own, own town. But on the road to Emmaus, Jesus was going uh, and he walked a little further and they said it's evening so come sit with us but as they were discussing and as Jesus took the bread and he broke it their eyes were open and let's read the the scriptures uh, they asked they, they then their eyes were 31 then their eyes were open and they recognized him and they disappeared from their sight they asked each other were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us. The greatest challenge of the church is that the church is dull. There's a dullness that is taking over the church of Jesus Christ because the church is, is, is exiled in a religion. The church must have an exodus out of religion into the promised land. The church must have an encounter with the resurrection and life on the road to Emmaus. As we sit down and discuss the scriptures, and as we sit down and break bread, may God open your eyes to see that Christ is not a religion. That the church is not a religious institution and an organization. That church gatherings cannot be religious gatherings, but it needs to be family gatherings because church is a family. That we would clearly have an understanding of what Jesus meant by the Great Commission. We would have a clarity on what we need to do about our lives of how we need to turn away from the old to the new and how we need to really live this new life inside our families. How we need to live this new life before the watching world and within the family of families. How we need to live this new life before the authorities of this earth and how do we continue to live this new life until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. May our eyes be open. May we come together, discuss God's word and resurrection and life will come amongst us. And as we break bread together within our homes, may God remove the dullness that has come over our lives. For resurrection and life says, come out of dullness. Come out of your deadness. Come out of your distress. Come out of your denial. Come out of your dullness. Fifthly and finally, the spirit of resurrection walks this morning to you and he's shaking his hands and he's saying, I'm life, I'm resurrection and life. For he will put an end to the drought of your life. There is dryness. There is a famine. You're famished. You're so dry. There's drought inside the families. There's drought because of finances. There's a lack in health. 
there's a drought that you're going through. And Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee because the disciples had actually gone back to fishing their old profession because they didn't know what to do. They didn't have a future. And they were fishing all night. They're putting the nets. Did you know that where, in all probability, they would have thrown the net exactly where Jesus asked them to throw. They didn't just stay in one place. They, they kept moving and did all that they could do to fish. But there was a drought. There was no fish. And every fish in that lake started to hide from Peter's net that night. Until resurrection and life walked by the Sea of Galilee. And he looked at the disciples and said, You know what? You've been going through drought. You have not been able to catch even one fish, fishing a whole night. Your professionalism about fishing does not help you this night. I want you to put your net on the right side because I'm going to command fishes to come to your net. You will not throw your net where fishes are, but I'm going to command fishes to come to your net. And suddenly, the net started to tuck and there were fishes that were coming into Peter's net. And they started to pull and drag and they were not able to drag because there was abundance. And I want to declare to you, when resurrection and life comes into your life, and he shakes hands and he says, I'm life, I'm resurrection and life, he is actually coming into your life into abundance. More than all that we can ask, more than all that we can imagine, he is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Everyone say exceedingly abundantly. Everyone open up your mouth and say exceedingly and abundantly. More than all that I can ask or imagine. That's who your father is. And that's what the resurrection power does. He comes into you and he says, no matter what is your lack, be it finances, be it health, be it relationships, Maybe there's a lack of emotional maturity in your life and you're struggling. Everyone seems to be hurting you. You need strength in your mind. You need strength in your emotions and your heart. I want to declare to you, resurrection and life is coming by your side. And he's telling you, your drought will come to an absolute end today. You don't have to wait for another day. Because your drought is coming to an end today. I want you to close your eyes with me. I want you to process the word this morning. There are five D's that shifts in your life this morning. Because he walks in, shakes your hand and he says, I'm life. I'm resurrection and life. I'm life. I'm resurrection and life. For deadness is gone in Jesus' name. For distress is gone in Jesus' name. Your denial is reversed in Jesus' name. Your drought is gone in Jesus' name. Your dullness is gone in Jesus' name. I want you to stand up to your feet together. I want you to lift up your hands and say, God, we welcome resurrection. We re welcome resurrection and life. We welcome resurrection. We welcome resurrection and life.